glucagon and the liver work to increase blood glucose levels. Fasting and aerobic exercise are the main causes of a decrease in blood glucose levels. The body responds in three ways to a decrease in blood glucose, glucose sparing, glycogenolysis, and gluconeogenesis. When blood glucose levels drop, one response is to try to keep as much glucose in the blood as possible without actually increasing the amount of glucose in the blood. This is accomplished by making other fuel sources available. In response to a drop in blood glucose, alpha cells of the pancreas can secrete glucagon to stimulate the release of fatty acids and amino acids into the blood to be used as fuel sources instead of glucose. If cells begin using these other fuel sources, it will preserve the glucose in the blood available to the central nervous system. Additionally, during intense exercise when blood lactate levels rise, the heart can rely on lactate as a fuel and less on glucose as a fuel. By relying on other fuel sources, the tissues do not use as much glucose in the blood, which spares the glucose and is why the process is referred to as glucose sparing. Glycogenolysis is the breakdown of the glycogen stores in the liver. Glucagon can also stimulate glycogenolysis in the liver. Glucose molecules are broken off of glycogen and released into the blood, increasing the amount of glucose in the blood. However, there is an important difference between liver glycogen and skeletal muscle glycogen. Skeletal muscle glycogen is used as a fuel inside the muscle cell, but muscle glycogen is not released into the blood. Therefore, only liver glycogen can actually increase blood glucose levels, and liver glycogen plays a more important role in regulation of blood glucose than muscle glycogen. Lastly, to increase blood glucose, the liver can rely on gluconeogenesis, which is the production of new glucose molecules. The Cori cycle and the glucose alanine cycle are the most common pathways the liver uses in gluconeogenesis. In the normal breakdown of glucose inside a cell, glucose is split into two pyruvate molecules that are eventually degraded into two acetyl-CoA molecules. However, during intense exercise, so much glucose is taken up by the muscle cell that some of the pyruvate becomes lactate instead of acetyl-CoA. So much lactate can build up that the lactate diffuses out of the cell and enters the blood. This lactate is not forever lost, however. Besides being used as fuel in the heart, the liver can also take up the lactate and produce glucose, which is a process known as the Cori cycle. This is accomplished by simply reversing the process that produced the lactate. Two molecules of lactate are converted to pyruvate, and the two molecules of pyruvate are then combined to form one molecule of glucose. The glucose is then released from the liver into the blood, giving the contracting muscle another chance to use the glucose as fuel. Thus, the Cori cycle simply recycles lactate back to glucose when lactate levels are high and glucose levels are decreasing. The glucose alanine cycle is a similar process, except the liver uses the amino acid alanine instead of lactate to form new glucose that is released into the blood. Thus, when plasma glucose levels drop, increased availability of other fuel sources can spare glucose and help maintain glucose levels in the blood. The liver can respond by increasing the amount of glucose in the blood through breaking off glucose molecules through glycogenolysis and secreting the glucose into the blood. Lastly, the liver can produce new glucose through gluconeogenesis, utilizing the Cori cycle or the glucose alanine cycle, and releasing the newly formed glucose to the blood. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to our channel.